like you lot went from talking about hundred plus points challenging for the league to <laughs> man, challenging for top four is gonna be tough. Bro. XG is on brilliant seventy. It's on fucking oh. superb. Oh, but it's just brilliant. been one season, bro. One season to oh, go from second brilliant. to yo, like hopefully we finish fourth in one season. Like what a nightmare of a summer. The difference yeah. is we get Jurgen Klopp. It's the same. It's the same board as well. Michael Edwards is there when um, we had Brendan Rodgers when we bought Balotelli and that. It's all right. It's all about all the good signs. That's a that good point. Michael yeah. Edwards saying, but it, it's still Sam Ricky Lambert, Fabio Barini. <laughs> well, yo, he's got a great reputation. People will start to forget that, you know. People have forgotten he signed all them players, bro. I forgot I, he signed them what? as well. Valentelli and Fabio Bonini. Bro, he gets all the he gets all the credit here yeah, for all your good signings, but bro, no one talks about the shit one. Alberto Moreno, Mama do so oh, Colo Torre, he said Colo <laughs> Torre. Lads, this is what I'm saying. What Jurgen Klopp has been doing, I don't care if he spends 700 mil, because in, in comparison to everyone else, he still shouldn't have achieved measly a footnote of what he has. And that is the mm. argument I will make till the cows come home. And wait until, if one day he does somehow get that Bayern Munich job, I'll watch him fuck up everyone in Germany. I'll watch him fuck up everyone in Germany, especially if Pep's not there. I'll, I'll watch him fuck up yeah. everyone, lads. Guarantee it. So that's that's always my point on FSG. You know, I'm not saying that they might not be able to spend extra money. I don't have a clue. I think they can. And I think that Liverpool is just a way to raise their pockets and they're just using the history of the football club and the culture of the football club to be like, yeah, we want to be ambitious. Because obviously, when you show an ambition, a lot more people watch and whatever. But. No, 100%. It's just not good enough, lads, especially. That's why I'm top four. I'm saying we're top four. I'm happy with it in the Champions League music season and season out. You have to be, bro. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be... Like, you lot went from talking about 100-plus points challenging for the league to... <laughs> man, challenging for top four is going to be tough, bro. XG have done brilliant, haven't they? They've done fucking yeah. superb. Oh, but it's just brilliant. been one season, bro. One season to go oh, from second brilliant. to yo, like hopefully we finish fourth in one season. Like what a nightmare of a summer! What a, what a, what a smart group of people! What a bro. smart group of people! I'll tell you that. Like for literally first. from the quadruple to top four in six months, bro. That has to be the <laughs> quickest decline ever, bro. So but you know what though, lads? You know what? I'm seeing clubs like Everton and that, lads. I, I, I'm all right. I'm yeah, I, I happy. West Ham spent 160 million and then man are in bruv, then man are in the relegation zone, I think, at the moment. You've got Leicester doing shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, like this this Premier League season's moving it could mad. Be worse. I can't lie. It, it could be worse. And I've just seen what United have just been through, and I think are we in a worse position than what United are? No. Like no, like not now, not now, but I mean what you was last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think with that I don't think we're that bad at all. You're uh, not there because you you've got the manager there. And you've got players exactly. that know which that is the most important stuff. thing. Like so when we got sign, players that when have we sign stuff Klopp. and the manager. Yeah. No, go on. Because you've got players that have won stuff and the manager. You're bruv, we had players that ain't won nothing and a manager that hadn't won nothing. So yes. you're in a better position than we were in 12 months, 18 months ago. A hundred percent. Yeah. No definitely. So you can definitely mm-hmm. you can definitely turn it you can definitely turn it around more than we could have done anything. But we finished sixth, innit? So boy. It's going to be interesting, but bro, like, imagine what a difference one summer can make. Do you know what and I mean? Then, How can West Ham be signing players like Paqueta and everyone was saying, our oh, Scamaka, when Man United were linked with a striker, people saying to go get him and that. West Ham at the fucking bottom of the league, bro, pretty much. It's mad, isn't it? Like, I, you've, I think you've got to give them more time. I think when you've got David Moyes and a manager that's proven to achieve there what he's achieved there um, mm. in both spells, really, because the first time he kept them up, it's like, regardless where West Ham are, he's a good manager to have in that position. So if West Ham are going to be competing for relegations, David Moyes tends to have a good record in relegation battles. And he's also had the ability to overachieve at certain times as well. In the short term, if it's shit, don't just, don't just sack him. Like, I think it's a bit different for Leicester because I think with Leicester, like, they're probably going to just keep losing games and they're going to just keep being shit. So in the short term... Even though the owners can sit there and be like, oh shit, Brendan, you've won us a community shield, you've won us an FA Cup, but bro, we just can't afford to get relegated. So even if it's even if the long term, the, the long term option is better to stay with you, 
we need to think about the short term and we don't think the short term is better to stay with you because we've been seeing what we've been seeing. So even if it's just a little shitty managerial bounce, that's going to keep us in the Premier League. That's something that we're just going to have to do. I think it's a bit different for West Ham. I think you can afford to give them at least until the World Cup until you start thinking mm. about David Moyes. But like you said, make some belter signings. I'd talk to quite a Liverpool. For mm. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% for over, sure. over, over Arthur. There was rumours coming out, yeah, that Klopp weren't happy with the Arthur signing, but I, I read that off, um, after that that the quotes might not be real, but they were saying that they were thinking about... But this is why. This terminating, is why the um, terminating the loan, bruv, already, because he wasn't happy with what he saw. Yeah, there's rumours that in January... Um, Klopp's going to be letting Arthur go and he played in an under-21s match the other night uh, against Leicester, I think, funnily mm. enough. The under-21s okay. team against Leicester. He played 90 minutes. Um, and I just apparently the fitness isn't there. The, the, yeah, the work lead is, isn't the quite fitness. there. And it's just... Uh, this is how you know it, Wayne Jürgen Klopp signing. Because yeah. if you see a player come to your club... Because if it's a manager signing, the manager's probably going to sit down with the player and have a talk with him. Oh, how's your fitness and that, lad? Oh, this, that. And he'll watch him himself. There's a reason why a manager will call out a player. It's because he would have seen things that he's happy with. To, to instantly say this about a player that he did or did not buy, I think shows that he didn't want him. I, I really, really mm. do. And I think it was just a short-term plaster to get over the fact that we needed a midfielder. And what FSG didn't want. And it's when I say FSG, I also mean the board of directors and Liverpool as a whole. It just it all stems from FSG, which is why I always refer it to them. Um, but the one thing that, that you've noticed is... Even with bringing in play, like when we never signed no centre backs, they got loads of backlash, and then we had to end mm-hmm. up going and getting a um, Kabach on mm-hmm. loan. It's like they can't be asked with that again, mate. Let's just get someone in now who's going to fill the void for the season, and then next season we'll bring in a big player and everyone will be happy again. Um, mm-hmm. They're doing the bare minimum to get the absolute most out of the performances on the pitch, and Arthur is certainly, uh, based on his Juventus record, his Barca record, is certainly not good enough. I just think they've made do with what they could do, uh, with what they had. Oh, it's a moody one with Nunes, isn't it? It's a stinky <laughs> one. It's a, it's it's a stinky bad, one. <laughs> it's a smelly shit that we just can't seem to get. It's like we picked up the shit, but the, the smell is still lingering. Um, mm. Oh, no, this this is a, a worrying. Worrying is, is the right word. I've been saying it since he joins. I think you know that I've been saying it since he joins as well. You will not find a clip out there of me getting overexcited about Nunes. The only thing I've ever said is that if it goes well with Nunes, it's him... Probably not having many or any 10 out of 10 games of football and probably having a lot of 5 out of 10s, but he might pick up a goal in those 5 out of 10s. Therefore, he's doing his job as an out-and-out number 9. The maximum I think he's got in him is a sort of, not like a target man, but the the outlet of the team that you're going to get the ball in behind to and making sure that he's on the end of chances. And he ends up with about 15 to 20 goals at absolute best. Or... Uh, you get what you have been getting, which is the same for five out of ten performances, uh, mm. but with no goals. So uh, the one thing I'll say is that it's a sign that we have to go ahead with because he's a big asset and we've got to try mm. and get the most out of him. Give him a chance. Wait till the team's a bit better collectively. See if the goals do come and then Liverpool fans can have some defence of these poor mm. performances. Hey, but the one thing that will not change is that same compilation that you've just saw. It won't. It, the fact that him and Haaland was ever a debate. Now, from technical ability, they're not far off each other, but there's a yeah. difference in terms of who is the more efficient and elite striker in terms of someone who really knows how to shape and manoeuvre their body, get receiving certain chances. Darwin Nunes is just someone who's a little bit out there uh, he's like that kid who's been going to karate for three months and then he just starts doing a few karate kicks, you know what I mean? Just because he thinks <laughs> he's, he's a weird guy. Just for, for banter, he's a he's a mad fella, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, because him and Holland... He's a fucking mad kid, isn't he? Bro, bro, him and Holland, yeah, they have both... ADHD through the roof, both of them. Both, both of them, them are, are, are bare, like... They've got that lanky kind of where they look off balance and the first touch isn't really there all the time. Because they're just two guys in it, and they're quite gangly. I always said about his first touch. I said yeah. that about Nunes. People were saying, like, yeah, the, the argument I made, because I never watched Nunes much at Benfica besides when he played mm. us. And I always said that, that because people were saying after that game, Nunes played boss, we should sign him. I was like, lad, he never had a first touch. I know he scored, yeah. but I don't want Mad that being right, my striker. 
Exactly. Yeah. And then it gets to the summer transfer window, and I go, do you know what? Let me give him a proper chance. Because what I remembered of Nunes weren't great. He scored a goal, but or scored two goals, but it weren't a great performance. So I was like, let me whack it in on YouTube, see how Nunes is. Clicked mm. on a compilation straight away, I saw him score nothing but tappings. One goal off the insides of his right foot. Mm. And his first touch was as shit as anything. It was always he was chasing his first touch or his hold of play was terrible. And all the basics you need to be a really, really good elite striker. Yeah. F- from that compilation, Nunes just didn't have. So I came on YouTube, transparently opened and openly said, God, oh, I haven't watched Nunes much. But it is watching YouTube compilation. And then people mm. in the chat, because it got viral at the time, because everyone thought Nunes was going to be sick. And everyone in the comments was saying, oh, this guy doesn't know much about football. Or, oh, oh does James think he knows more than Jürgen Klopp? Oh, does James think he knows more than fucking whoever the new thing is? Shut up. Shut up. No, I don't. But I can clearly tell when someone's got a first touch or not. And if you think mm. signing someone for £60 million... Pounds, who doesn't have a first touch is in no way concerning. Yeah. And I am sorry, you need to go to hospital. Oh, yeah, you need to have true. therapy. 100%. Oh, you need so much sorting out. You need brain cells twisted and wired and shit. Oh, you're wrong. Wrong in the, crazy. in the fucking face. It's fence. actually crazy how, like, every every Liverpool fan that I've ever spoken to says, oh, yeah, but Klopp likes him from when he played against us. But it's like, bro, you can appreciate a player's strengths, yeah? without overlooking all of their weaknesses. Do you know what I mean? And for me, mm-hmm. this guy's got way more weaknesses than strengths. It's just like with Holland, yeah? I know he's not a great footballer. I know that. I know he don't have a great first touch. I know he's not a great link player. But if you put him in the box with the ball anywhere near around, he scores. And not only that, his movement and his intelligence makes up for the fact that he's not great on the ball. Like, his stats mm-hmm. don't lie, bro. Like, the guy averages about 15 touches a game, bro. Like, in 90 minutes, bruv. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of the time, not even 90 minutes, Pep subs him off most games because yeah. he gets to the point where he's not scoring, Pep takes him off because he's like, all right, cool, we need to keep the ball now. We need a player that's yeah. actually going to be involved in the game. So we're going to take you off now so we can actually keep the ball a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Like When Pep points. wants to see the game Good out, point. he takes him off. Do you know what Good I mean? Point. Because he knows he's I thought he's it was involved. just his injuries. I thought it was no, just his injuries, bro. but now that because makes he sense. Wants, he wants to see the game out, bruv. Do you know what yeah. I mean? When you want to see the game out and keep the ball and run down the clock, you have to take Holland off because he's on the pitch, but he's always just trying to score. Like, he's not really getting involved in the build-up. And that's not mm. a weakness. That's just his style. Do 